What does structural racism look like today? It is true that slavery ended, but let's take a step further and look at Baltimore through the lens of structural racism. Baltimore's population is 64% African American, yet more than 89% of those held in jails are African Americans. 92% of marijuana possession arrests in Baltimore were of African Americans, one of the highest racial disparities in the USA. The average household income for white households in Baltimore is nearly twice the income of black households in Baltimore. The unemployment rate for workers of color in Baltimore is three times the rate of white workers in Baltimore. Nonviolent drug offenses account for 58% of prison admissions. Whites have 60% ownership in Baltimore compared to 42% of African Americans and 30% of Latinos. What can we do to create change? Most people living in and close to Baltimore don't know the history of structural racism here. It's much easier to blame individuals for not overcoming generations of racialized structural and institutional barriers. It is much harder to honestly look at the racialized history of this country and to acknowledge that chances were never equal. We all say that uh, everything is, you know, we're all starting uh, from the same starting line, right? Structural racism says, no, you're starting 100 yards behind the starting line. So how can you have an equal chance of dealing with inequality? We just perpetuate inequality by not allowing everyone to start at the same starting line. Honest, informed discussion, economic inclusion, policy change, and our ongoing collaborations are important components of changing our future. However, knowing and understanding this history, and most importantly, the ways it continues to impact our present, is a primary key to change. It takes a village. It takes me. It takes you. It takes all of us. Today, right now to make a change.